catch and release. Holy crap, this episode. Fair warning, there will be spoilers in this review. There will absolutely be spoilers in this review. A lot happened in the span of that 11 minutes, let me tell you. This episode felt like this season's version of something like The Message. It starts out pretty mundane. Steven is getting ready for bed. He goes to bed, talk, <laughs> talking to his stuffed animals, which is just freaking adorable. And he notices one that he doesn't seem to recognize that has a pointy head. And it's obviously Peridot, but Steven doesn't get it right away because he's Steven. And then all of a sudden it's gone. And then all of a sudden Peridot scoops up Steven and takes him to the homeworld warp, expecting him to fix it the way he fixed Lapis Lazuli's gem. He tries. He, it doesn't work. And Peridot, rather than like getting angry and just blowing him up, is scared. She's terrified because she knows something is coming. And this, this episode, it took so many plot points from previous episodes and pulled them all together. Here we have her hearkening back to the offhand statement that she made once, I don't even remember what episode it was in, that Earth has an expiration date. We finally get an explanation for that because she starts talking about the cluster and how the cluster hasn't hatched yet. What we have thought was the cluster was just a smaller, less advanced experiment. The actual cluster is still in the ground. And Peridot, who, according to herself, knows everything about the cluster. She seems to think, are you ready for this? That when the cluster does emerge from the ground, that will destroy the planet. And that also explains why Yellow Diamond doesn't seem to be showing up yet. Doesn't seem to be responding to Peridot's pleas for help. Because Yellow Diamond knows just as well as Peridot does that the Earth is effectively doomed. Now, Peridot has grappled with the Crystal Gems a few times at this point. She's actually captured and poofed by them in this episode before Steven actually lets her out so that she can continue to explain what she was trying to tell him. She has a decent understanding of their capabilities, and she seems to be generally knowledgeable anyway. And she is, seems absolutely positive that they cannot defeat whatever is coming. Now, granted, this is a lot like when Lapis sent the message to Steven saying not to fight the Homeworlders because they were too advanced and they couldn't be beaten and the heroes still won anyway, but it's, it's still pretty intense. So anyway, Steven frees her from her bubble. He now is able to navigate through the temple at will, it seems, which is pretty freaking interesting in, in and of itself. Frees her from her bubble, she regenerates, and when she was poofed earlier in the episode, we saw her robotic limbs did not poof with her. And when she does regenerate, we see she's in fact this little tiny adorable little gem. And I'm so excited by this because it confirms a lot of the things I already suspected about the character, that she's basically a kid. She's a lot like Steven, just a lot more aggressive about it. And, and it really makes sense if you look back at her behavior, she seems very childish. Poking fun, making faces, calling people names. And it makes sense that if she's a kid, she only believes what she's been told. She doesn't understand the nuances of the Civil War conflict. She hasn't formed an opinion about the other side. She's blindly loyal to Homeworld in the same way that a lot of children are blindly loyal to the religion that their parents present them with. And of course she gets out into Steven's house and she's running. she runs right past the other Crystal Gems, doesn't even see them. This episode was mostly played for comedy, in fact. They chase her around the house. Amethyst is brilliant in this scene, absolutely hysterical. They almost catch her a couple times, but Steven, here's Steven trying to tell them not to, that she knows something, that it's important, until finally she locks herself in the bathroom where the episode began when we were seeing Steven get ready for bed. And rather than just Garnet walk up and flick the door open, she actually knocks on the door and asks Peridot to open it. <laughs> I, laughed, I laughed out loud during that scene. It was absolutely hysterical. Now, maybe she didn't want to destroy Steven's house, but you're freaking Garnet. I'm pretty sure you could come up with something. Now, but anyway, this is when we get what I think is going to be a really important line going forward and one that actually reaffirms something that I've suspected about the history of the conflict between the Crystal Gems and the Homeworlders for a long time and was actually <laughs> just getting ready to write into a theory video. Peridot calls Garnet a war machine, specifically refers to her as a war machine. And Garnet gets really miffed at this and then goes to punch down the door. 
And this strikes me as a line on par with Jasper calling Amethyst overcooked or calling Pearl defective. This really feels like a hint at something that is going to be introduced into the lore going forward. But anyway, continuing with the plot of the episode, Pearl realizes that Peridot probably does know something. She's acting too fearful for this to be some kind of trick. So they decide to let her live in the bathroom until they can get her to sit down with them and talk about this civilly and find out what it is that she knows and prepare for it. And the episode ends with Steven starting to befriend Peridot. And if there's any character who can do that, it is Steven. This episode was great. It was really well done from just a cinematic perspective. The pacing was good. It was quick. It kept your interest from beginning to end. It was very well bookended with the scenes of Steven getting ready in his bathroom, which is not something I ever thought I would say. We finally got some genuine character development, or at least the platform, the foundation for character development for Peridot, who I have thought for a long time was going to end up becoming an ally to the Crystal Gems, and it looks like that might actually be the case now. I'm very excited about that. But overall, there's not a whole lot else to say about this episode that I haven't already mentioned in the video proper. I feel like this is an episode that is here mainly to be built upon, so I am really looking forward to seeing where the series goes from this point. But if you have seen Catch and Release, what did you think about it? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.